Salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Naomi Star's first vlog post. I have been tossing around the idea of doing this for a while, but just haven't done it. Uh, I tried a couple weeks ago and uh, to do a post without writing anything down, but my ADHD, perfectionist, writing, visual slash visually inclined stoner self, <laughs> it just didn't work. Uh, I prefer to write, but no one reads anymore. Well, our attention span is 280 characters at most. Which is funny to me because I gave a book to two different men this past year and they both have ADHD so they either will never read it and or it will take them forever to complete reading it <clears throat> and yes I'm wearing my DC shoes hoodie again this is my favorite hoodie by the way um and also I want to give a shout out to excuse me DeSoto to the fan who got me my DC shoes. I'm like, oh, hey, all matching. Um, so now I'm really, I've had this hoodie since, um, and also the fan also got me my Burton gloves for snowboarding because they needed new gloves. And I also, my ex had given me white ones, um, my golfing ex. You know that I have nicknames for all my exes. Uh, or my golfing ex is the one that I traveled to or moved to South Carolina with. Uh, it's a horrible uh, Myrtle Beach. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, I have nicknames for all my exes. Well, golfing ex, Wall Street ex, pseudo ex number one, pseudo ex number two, my Canadian ex, <laughs> uh, and, uh, ex husband. Okay. Um, got my golfing ex. He was very much in love with me. But he was a little too uh, violent and angry with my with my dog. Um, I had my German Shepherd Logan. He didn't really like him. He was kind of mean to him. He didn't really like my cats. He was the one who uh, had a pit bull, and that's how I fell in love with pit bulls. But uh, he went to punish his own dog one day because she ate I don't know, some candy or something that was on on in the coffee table on the coffee table and he dislocated her hip that's how much uh damage he did and he had to go to work so i had to take her to my vet so clearly uh that was that was not good i still moved to South Carolina with him after that, which uh, I didn't look back on, but okay, whatever. Um, so last night, smoking weed, contemplated my existence, <laughs> was sad, drank bourbon, uh, <laughs> and, and I passed out, uh, oh, and I, <laughs> I drank, this is the huge bottle, which a, uh, my, fan slash client gave to me and this is how much I drink okay maybe a smidgen less because I just poured myself that glass and also before I went to uh sleep or passed out I poured myself a little bit and then after I ate put on Rick and Morty and I ended up passed out on the couch so I slept with my contacts in and hence why I have my uh colored ones in now um Oh, and I got my nails done today. This is actually called cat eye. You can see the the hint there of why it's called cat eye. But I got, you know, back to black because it's the shade of my heart. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, so I passed out on the couch. Um, I woke up at eight pretty much exactly. And, and then I, uh, wiped off all my makeup, let out the dogs, and then I started writing. Uh, but since people do not fucking read, uh, I decided I'll read what I wrote instead. Uh, and um, I don't know what this vlog is going to be. It's gonna be sporadic and authentic and 
very much me, obviously. <laughs> uh, and maybe I'll do some makeup videos, maybe some like CrossFit. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, but here is what I composed. Damn, I need a drink. Cheers, guys, to the end of another fucking year. My anxiety, and this is why my anxiety of going into 2020, even though I'm I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic, because I want to fucking do things. I always have the same things on my list every fucking year. It's always write more, create more, learn fucking Spanish, and travel. Those four things are always on my fucking list of like New Year's resolutions. Uh, <laughs> and and then yeah, I'm just I have not really done any of them. Um, so hence why I also decided to to write this to help me with everything um, and to get myself out of where I was. What am I smoking? Uh, this is Gorilla Glue number four, I believe, is what I rolled up last night. Uh, this is the joint that I rolled. This is the, uh, I smoked two joints last night in addition to drinking that much bourbon, or two and a half joints, because I still had this. Or was this from earlier? I don't know. Anyway, I've been smoking a lot of weed. Uh, now to my the piece that I composed. Uh, my shadow's the only one that walks beside me. My shallow heart's the only thing that's beating. That's the title. I drank bourbon last night, smoked weed, listened to Green Day and Story of the Year, sang and danced and talked myself out of my depression. I've met a lot of people over the past few years that I felt we met each other at the wrong time of our lives. I think it is serendipitous when you meet a person you fall in love with and they fall in love with you too. Oh, I'm going to apologize as I'm realizing right now because I'm so used to hearing it, is that the noise that you are hearing. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm going to be adding, I'm sure, a few things as I read my post, uh, but the noise that you're hearing is Atticus chewing on uh, the toy, on this toy, which is the thing that, it, Pavlina had broken off a piece and she swallowed and that's what she had to get radiographs for to see if there was anything else lodged in her. Um, in addition to Pavlina and Brana getting in a fight a few weeks ago, which they're fine now, but my handsome boy is not as handsome anymore. He's still beautiful though, but his half of his head is shaved. <laughs> Uh, but that's the, the noise that you were hearing as he chews on that. So, back to it. It happened with my best friend, and she's been with her boyfriend for seven years. They met each other at the right moments, and they were able to expand upon their attraction. But it doesn't always happen this way. I've been with plenty of people to know when the chemistry is there or not. And even with my tally, there are not many on my list that give me that spark. Some of my exes are not even on there. But you may meet someone and they're already with someone. Or in the case of my potential sugar daddy that I was conversing with at the beginning of fall, he was diagnosed with cancer. Or they live on another continent. And my one friend, he found the love of his life and she died about a year and a half later. Life just really likes to fuck you sometimes. As you get older, you become more jaded. You tolerate less. You also get tired of the bullshit and people are undervaluing you. I put up a lot of walls to protect myself, and rightly so. People have hurt me over and over again. I've hurt people too. It happens. The last time I heard from my color scientist was on Singles Awareness Day last year, and his last words to me were, fuck you. He loved me more than I loved him, and that's why I, hence why I ended things. I kind of felt I deserved that goodbye. I literally told myself, fuck love, and became a whore four years ago. I know what I am. I've never been the girl slash woman that guys fall for. 
I'll suck your cock better than most, and you'll never how great a fuck I am, but you'll never love me. At this point in my life, I have been wondering why have I, have I, mani at this point in my life, I have been wondering, have I manifested this? And I'm, this is outside of the post, but I'm thinking, so when I moved here, I put up three post-it notes, or four post-it notes on my mirror in my bathroom and very contradictory which is always my in my case uh the one is the uh, the saying it's a meme um that my friend has sent me a, a while ago and it says don't chase people be an example the people who belong in your life will come find you and stay just do your thing and then another post-it was, I am just sex and I am fucking awesome and love only yourself because no one else will. Yeah, some contradictory fucking messages there, <laughs> clearly. Uh, but I had those on my mirror for the longest time. So as I'm reading and as I was writing this, I was thinking about that. I took those, I still have the don't chase people one uh, up on my mirror, even though I still obviously did not fucking listen to that. Um, <laughs> oh, my best friend would be, so she'd be laughing hysterically hearing this. But when I'm asking myself this question, I have been wondering, have I manifested this? And I'm like, hmm, all right, okay. I'm thinking my painting, one of the paintings I should do is a painting with the, just the word love on it and kind of do a, and do the painting like what Carrie has in her apartment in, uh, in Sex and the City, but I think that's a, it's not a painting in the, in the movie, um, but I love that piece. Maybe I can like manifest it, manifest love. Um, but back to my writing. I've talked about it with my best friend. I project myself to be just about sex in order to protect myself. And then when I want the person to see me as more than that, they want nothing to do with me. It's funny to me in a way because there have been quite a few people I have dated and immediately after me, they find the love of their life. <laughs> now I'm thinking, this is, I was, again, outside the post, uh, is that that should be my marketing tool. It's like, have you been looking for love? Well, come and date me and fuck around with my feelings for a little bit. And the next person you date is going to be the love of your life. See, there's my marketing tool. Uh, <laughs> all right, back to it. Perhaps my purpose is just to be a catalyst for other people to find love. However, it is infuriating to be because I know I'm smarter, prettier, and a better fuck than the women they date after me. The qualities that they have, I possess. I'm an honest person and a loyal friend. I'm polite, kind, respectful, driven, intelligent. So what the fuck is it about me that screams, do not love? <laughs> when this happens to me, and again, I repeat, this happens to me a lot. Uh, and I'm thinking the my pseudo ex number one and my pseudo ex number two, right after me, they, you know, have been with their women for years now, for four years, three years, respectively, uh, after, you know, being with me. So, you know, uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway. I'm always told I'm not looking for a relationship. And then the next person they date, they end up being with for years. So when this happens to me, it just feeds my insecurity, my self-doubt, my feelings of worthlessness, and that I'm not good enough to love. Lola, I'll use her by her alias. Oh, let's see. I'm focusing on reading this and not on smoking this joint. But this is almost done. And I could have rolled this tighter. Lola, I'll use her alias, my best friend, asked me recently if there was someone I would return to out of my exes, who would it be? And I hesitantly told her my Wall Street ex. 
she asked me why and I said because he loved me as much as I loved him and our sex was so intense it always felt like fucking and making love and we were constantly blurring those lines he and I never experienced that before and I have yet to experience it again a few have come close but they didn't love me but we fell in love with each other the first night we met and we fucked until morning. He also understood my past and why I am as sad as I am. He also had money, was a foodie, loved and respected animals. He was smarter in ways that I am not. Uh, Lola pointed out to me, I love how you pick all these moments and then bypass the fact that it ended with you trying to commit suicide and lying in a pool of your own blood. We had a laugh. He was the only person I wanted to get pregnant with. I admit, I entertained the idea of starting a family with my ex-husband during my quarter-life crisis because that's what one is supposed to do, right? Get married, have kids. This is what the naive 25, 26-year-old me thought. But I knew early on I married the wrong person and there was no way I wanted kids with him. But with my Wall Street ex, I did. He was the first person I had been in my fear of getting pregnant. I still remember that moment. We were at his Manhattan apartment in bed, naked, after already making love. And I just let the tears fall as I told him. He just wiped my tears away, kissed me, looked me in my eyes and said, I would still love you and I would love our child because it would embody our love for each other. And then we made love, again, hoping our love would create life. I love the show Watchmen on HBO. This is a side note, but one that relates to this post. If you haven't seen it yet, just skip this section. But Dr. Manhattan says about Angela Abar, I know the moment I first see her. I sense profound emptiness and loss. I know because she says over and over again that she doesn't want a family, yet it is clear through her actions that it is all that she wants. Fuck that hit home. My eyes watered up a bit and I thought back to a boss. Fuck it, I'm using his real name. His initials are tattooed on my ass and a boss is a common name. Yes, he is Middle Eastern and he is Muslim. He was, he's first generation and as much as I believe we loved each other, I never met his family. That was a big issue for me. I tried to respect the fact that they were conservative Muslims, but it hurt me that he never introduced me to his parents or his sister. We went to Madrid so he could visit his sister and brother-in-law and he thought it best to keep it a secret that I came with. Hence why I was alone for almost a day and a half and that first day I was alone the night before we had a huge argument because I found out he was still talking to his ex-girlfriend. The one he left me, left to, the one he left to be with me for. And he was still taking care of her. She so was still living in their Manhattan apartment while he lived with me in Brooklyn. I've written about this toxic love triangle before to use a cliche line, my heart sank when I saw their emails to each other. We'd already fought earlier at dinner, which resulted in me walking out of the restaurant and taking the train back to the hotel alone. He was furious with me because we were in a foreign country and I, that I'd never been to, but I'm smart enough to pay attention to where I am and where I'm going and the little Spanish I know, I knew I would be fine. I threw his phone at him. He was sleeping, by the way. Uh, I saw the emails. We fought, and then he did the worst thing he could do to me. He fucked me. We both knew sex was at the core of our relationship and what I need to feel desired. But the little trust I had in him and us, he did a lot to make me not trust him, and hence why I went through his phone was completely shattered at that moment. He pushed me against the wall and stuck his dick inside me. And I told him no. And I started crying. This is what you want, right? He said to me, not like this. 
and the 14 and 18 year old rape victim me allow, allowed him to fuck me like that. Just letting it happen and having the tears flow. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna need some more after thinking about that again. I know I look tired in this post because I am because I was crying and drinking and getting really stoned last night. Uh, and then, you know, I've just been writing uh, and until I had to go to my nail part uh, appointment today. <laughs> <clears throat> he left the next day to go meet up with his family and I never left the hotel room six months later and I'm cutting myself with a box cutter watching the water get red and a pool of blood starts to form on the floor beside our bed the boss wasn't home he was out of t states to visit his family because it was mother's day I was switching between being in the bathtub and I put a picture next to our bed so I could lie down and stick my arm in it to keep the blood flowing because you know your your veins close uh, and yes that's how sad desperate and ill I became after bleeding out the whole night in the morning I called Lola and I told her she needed to come over she knew by the sound of my voice something was wrong I messaged her that my apartment would be unlocked by the time she got there. I barely had enough strength to make it to the door, so I knew by the time that she would be, she would, she got there, I wasn't going to be able to make it to the door. She saw me crawling on the floor in my own blood. The bathtub was red too, and she called 911. I was in and out of consciousness during the time they got me in the gurney and took me down the elevator and loaded me into the ambulance. I knew I was dangerously close to dying that day. Mother's Day happens to be one of the busiest days in the restaurant business. Lola and I were both supposed to be working. Out of all of our mutual coworkers, some of whom I called friends, only one person texted me after and asked how I was. I'll always remember that and that and why I will always consider that person a friend. Uh, which just, you know, it's, it goes back to why I have a hard time trusting people. Um, I found it fitting to be on Mother's Day because being given up for adoption and having a mother told, tell me she wished she, oh, I need, I need to fix this. Can I? Uh -oh. Mother tell me. I found it to be fitting on Mother's Day because being given up for adoption and having a mother who no, that was right. Who told me? I love how I see getting a little stoned. Um she wished she never adopted me and that I had just died instead when I was six is at my core and shaped who I am today. Those feelings of being unwanted, unlovable, and worthless. It all stems from those two critical points in my childhood. This family being an unwanted little and worthless. Ah, uh, yeah, that's correct. See, this is what I'm constantly rereading through and why I'm always, and this is why it takes me forever because I read things over and over again. Mm -hmm. Sorry, now I guess go back like no that's not right you just find little things like uh you should have said it this way mm -hmm. i am finding my spot of where i am okay those feelings of being unwanted unlovable and worthless it all stems from those two critical points in my childhood and then 97% of the relationships I've had with men have been untrustworthy and or I'm just good enough to fuck, but not good enough to love. Uh, but rarely to love. 
I'm able to analyze myself and my experiences and anyone with some intelligence should be able to figure out, oh, this is why she doesn't trust people or why I say I don't like most people. People have hurt me. Family has hurt me. Love has hurt me. But I keep trying. I keep trying to find love. I have learned to love myself and I still struggle with it. And I want to so much to love another person as much as they love me. This is where Lola and I differ. She can be completely focused on making money. She would rather have a lot of money than love. I want love. She asked me if I was given a couple million dollars by some wealthy man, would I really want love? Yes, I said. I want money too, don't get me wrong. But if the right person came along, I would quit being a whore. Funny enough, my heart is a traditionalist. And when I love someone, I only want them. I only wanted a boss. The only reason I started seeing people for money was that my ex-husband was kind of a shitty person and I needed to provide for us. I was already working two jobs or I tried to have two jobs while living in the city. It's so fucking expensive. Uh, I love New York. Oh, I miss New York so much. Um, when I met Lola, she told me about webcamming. So I tried to sneak on while my ex was at work and when I wasn't working at the restaurant, I met people off Craigslist and seeking arrangement. Stop. <laughs> yes, he's been in my lap the whole time. I met people off Craigslist and seeking arrangement. Silence. And that's actually how I met a boss. He didn't want me being with others, and he didn't even want men jerking off to me on cam. He had the money, so I stopped doing both. I was his, and he was mine. Besides telling each other we loved one another while he was inside me, we would say, I am yours. As I said at the beginning of this post, that level of intensity and intimacy a boss and I had is unmatched. And that's why I would return to him. However, I did tell Lola that I would only return if he looked the way he did while we were dating. He's gotten fat and unattractive and I look the best I ever have, uh, which is the case for most of my exes actually. And as I was thinking about this, I'm like, mm, yeah, everyone got fat and lazy, but they all had, you know, like kids and, found love so i'm like oh maybe it's a good thing i don't know <laughs> um but uh yeah so you know <laughs> i'm back to about uh yeah what did i say um with many heartbreaks you do a lot of self-improvement or you hopefully do anyway when you fuck around with a 26 year old guy who's a good person and mature for his age Yet, he dated someone who's the exact opposite of you, but he doesn't consider you an option. You're left wondering, what the fuck is wrong with me? Again! And that's where my headspace was last night. But life likes to fuck with me. It will dangle a good person in front of me, but then say, hey, they live on the other side of the country or on a different continent. Or many times in my case now, because I'm in my mid thirties is this person already found someone or they're nearly a decade younger than you and you're too jaded and damaged now because of all the crappy hands that you've been dealt and you only have a few viable eggs left if there even are any. So it's back to fuck love and fuck life. Life has taught me that the only love I can trust is my own and my menagerie. And even trusting myself is a recurrent battle. My emotions still take me to my negative feedback loop and I automatically go to just end, thing now. Just end things now. Why do you keep trying? This is where I got to on my Instagram story, which was really long, but it's important to know what helps heal you because I've flipped that and life switch so many times. It's easy to flip it back on. I feel like it's 
been on autopilot since I was 14. But I've learned to know what helps me. I'm lonely and I'm constantly feeling like I'm unlovable. So what did I do? I surrounded myself with animals who provide me unconditional love. I listened to Beyonce's Lemonade and Homecoming albums on constant repeats. I listened to my emo punk music, drink bourbon, smoke weed, <laughs> eat an entire bag of Kettle brand potato chips in one sitting. Not every day though. Lose days to Netflix. Be in the gym for two to four hours a day, six days a week. Now I'm smoking BBC, the blueberry cheesecake, I believe. <laughs> Not big black cock. Um, see, this could have been tired too. I feel, you know, some days my joints are really good and they're nice and tight. And I feel, you know, I really didn't start getting decent at rolling joints because everyone that I had dated previously always rolled their own. So, you know, I always, I, as I've always said, it's like Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule. And, you know, and so the time that you spend constantly rolling up joints, but because I hadn't done it for most of my time being a fucking stoner, and now I'm doing it and like, yeah, so that's, that's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> okay. Talk to good friends and or therapist. I'm working on that, but my ADHD therapist recommended a personality disorder specialist to me. And of course, they do not accept my health insurance. So again, fuck you, life. You have to find what helps dig you out of your darkest places and give yourself permission to be sad and depressed. Life fucking sucks. Falling for someone and being rejected fucking sucks. Losing a loved one. I'm at that age now where my parents, my, my friend's parents are dying and my parents are going to be 70 and 73 respectively this year. Fucking sucks. <laughs> I still love my parents. I love my mother despite how much she emotionally damaged me. Yeah, she did a lot of damage to me. Oh. <laughs> I'd like for them to see me happy. Oh, this is delicious. Mmm. I'd like for them to see me happy before they die. They saw me happy once when I was with a boss. He was the only man I dated that my father shook his hand and said, thank you, I've never seen her this happy. That's probably why I shut out all the toxicity and the bad in our relationship. When my father said that, it struck me. The love that I felt with the boss was so apparent that my father clearly saw it. I want love and acceptance. I've been wanting it since I was six when that smiley, happy, but lonely since I was an only child and could not have any pets. Little girl buried herself in her mother's cruel words. I think I deserve both those things. And I've done a lot to grow and heal myself over the past few years, and I've gotten myself to a place that loves and accepts who I've become as, re as a result of my shitty past. So maybe this is why I keep trying, and I'm still around, alive, sadly, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> during, during one of my suicide attempts or threats back, when I was 18, I was in the back of the ambulance and the woman paramedic said to me, life is going to get better. You'll see. You'll find love and happiness in someone who deserves you. 17 years later and I'm still searching. Now I'm facing my mortality and time is running out for me. I'm turning 35 in a couple of weeks and I can't help but think, Am I going to continue traveling alone down this boulevard of broken dreams? And that was my post. Uh, but the whole point being, 
find what helps heal you and gets you out of that dark, incessant place. And I know out of many people, and this is why I actually, I would just inform someone that, uh, the fucking 26 year olds of, you know, that I actually wanted to, as much as they say that I don't like people, I wanted to help people. I wanted, that's why I was quadruple majoring <laughs> because I wanted to combine uh, creative arts therapy and animals and either helping with foster kids or veterans and or both or, you know, and the underprivileged or, you know, I love Pipples and Pirelli's, the show and their organization. Um, and, you know, I, I'm empathetic to many people. That is why I think that I'm able to be, I have, being an upstate New Yorker, I have a lot of people who have opposing views than I do. Uh, but uh, commonality is just life and <laughs> how much it sucks. So I can, and I understand that because it's hurting and being sad, I can identify with. We all know that as human beings. Uh, we all experience it in some way. The uh, Also, the other thing that I have found, and I mentioned this, I believe, in my Snapchat uh, a little bit ago, was about animals, our pets, especially in America, because we love our pets. We love our pets. Uh, and we can, we can have a commonality between the love and affection and uh, that we have for them and when they pass away. So that's where we can help, I feel, bridge the gap between each other. Uh, and when we can leave the, uh, I mean, and some of the people that I still like are friends or acquaintances on Facebook with, and some of the things that they post is so disgusting to me and to see their, their ignorance. Uh, it, that's what it is. It's their ignorance. Uh, and, but yet I can identify with, you know, if they've lost their dog or, you know, or lost a parent. Uh, and even though I have yet to go through that, um, I can still, with my friends experiencing that within the past couple years, you know, I think that's why I'm also, you know, valuing and questioning my mortality at this moment uh, but again just find what works for you and I mentioned this in my Instagram story is that you you know I don't have an addictive personality luckily uh, that's why I can smoke weed and uh, drink bourbon and party sometimes and you know but uh, I would say I'm addicted to sex. I really love sex. Uh, and and working out because the masochist in me uh, really enjoys pushing myself and being focused on something to get me uh, concentrated on something besides all my negative shit. That's, that's why I, you know, uh, crossfit and work out as much as I do. Um, just always something for me to improve upon. Uh, and I like that focus. I like being able to focus on that. But it was, it's funny because, oh, another thing that is funny is that uh, right before I met a boss, I went to India and he, Abbas and I were conversing with each other on seeking arrangement for a while, and then we exchanged numbers and we were doing that. And he was working a shit ton. Uh, and so we didn't, it was quite a few months before we actually met each other. And originally it was supposed to be he and I and also his girlfriend, and then no longer was she in the picture and it was just him. Uh, but. You know, I was still wanting to meet him. Um, so I finally met him, even though he and I had been talking, when I got back from India. And 
I, <laughs> I corrupted uh, a Brahmin boy uh, and gave him head. <laughs> no one ever fucking forgets. I still have people who message me. This is the thing about me. And this is what I have to realize. Um, and I was saying this, that I want to meet uh, Daniel Soder uh, because <laughs> he and I, I feel, would get along so well because we're both fucking potheads. We smoke a lot. He plays a lot of video games, which, okay, whatever. Um, and, but we're both really damaged, and I think we would be great fucks <laughs> for each other. Um, but I'm thinking, yeah, that, uh, see, now I'm losing my train of thought because I'm stoned. Okay. Him, and then pot. <laughs> That's all I can think of now. Oh, fuck. This is what happens when you drink bourbon and you smoke weed. And this is why I have to write out things because now I'm, yeah, not there anymore. About being damaged. Yes. And fucking. Oh, about, yes, of realizing enough. Nine. Fooey. Plots. Plots. Bronic. Bronic. Plots. Oh boy. Uh, and, oh, about being uh, a damaged person is the and pe and people not forgetting me i still have i still have guys who will contact me and it's been years years and they'll be like hey remember this one time that we fucked on our break from work in my car <laughs> no one fucking forgets fucking me uh <laughs> so i guess that's i give I give happiness to a lot of people. That's what I do. That's why I'm here. It's my the reason for my existing still. It's not to find love for myself. It's just to provide happiness for other people. <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't know, guys. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Um, but getting back to it is that, oh, I corrupted a Brahmin boy. And I forgot how young he is and i went with uh why i went to india was for a documentary production and and uh, so i went with a bunch of uh cuny students and my good friend felipe uh who i love and actually he lives in la i haven't seen him um in years in three years two years yeah because it was right after when i started dating my color scientist and he was still living in San Francisco. But we went to India together, had an awesome time. It was an amazing experience. I'm still friends with a lot of the kids on Facebook that I met. Um, and yeah, I corrupted and really liked this tall Brahmin boy. Um, and he's, he's a good kid. And so, and coincidentally, he just messaged me and he and I have not talked in years. Uh, you know, obviously, when you go somewhere and then you talk to someone constantly for a little bit and then time goes on and you fall out of touch. There, but there only are, there was only like a couple people that I still would say the message. Uh, and they were all, they're all in love with me. All the boys, the three boys that I still talk to. Uh, and my friend Felipe definitely fell for this beautiful girl named Aria, coincidentally. And she had this amazing fucking smile. Like I can, I can visualize her smile and it was the most beautiful thing. And she was such a beautiful fucking person. And then um, when we got back, uh, that's when Abbas and I met. So I guess, I guess that's where I picked the whole like Middle Eastern thing up. <laughs> and then she, my foster dog, Bella, she died. They made me put her down because she was too unpredictable because she had bit a couple people. Um, even though I tried to do, hey, I tried to do everything in my power to not 
force the organization to make me put her down. I still had to, and hence why I have the tattoo to commemorate her with her ashes in it. Uh, and, and then, so she died. And then uh, Arya fucking killed herself. And like, just remembering that beautiful fucking smile of hers and not knowing that she was struggling like that. Like I was like kind of talking to her and like a few of the other girls too that I met once we got back to New York. Um, makes me really fucking sad. Um, and so, you know, now I was thinking back when, you know, when the boss and I were together, uh, and, you know, I told him my fear of why, fear of getting pregnant and fear of having a child. And, but at the same time, I always imagined that I would probably have a child. I would have one little girl and the power, the power, you know, trip and maze, uh, that she would take over the world and make it a better place. Uh, this beautiful, intelligent, little mixed child. <laughs> but I wanted to name her Arya. Um, cause because of her and because of obviously she's an amazing character in Game of Thrones. Um, but yeah, and then it's why uh, everything, I kind of like tore myself open again when uh, I tried to commit suicide um, six years ago five, five and a half years ago, or whenever it will be, um, and, yeah, so that, that part of me of wanting, of wanting that, of wanting family, I just fucking toss that away, uh, and now I'm too old, like, you know, I th think maybe like, oh, maybe I can adopt a child, but who's going to give a child to a whore? So I'm just going to fucking die alone with a bunch of fucking animals who are going to eat my fucking corpse, guys. <laughs> Fuck. That's what, I mean, it's going to happen. Okay. Like it's, <laughs> that's what they do uh, when you decide to die alone with no one else. Um, but I think the dogs need to go outside. And now I'm getting emo because I'm drinking bourbon and smoking weed. So this is where I'm going to end it. Uh, but allow yourself, as I'm going to reiterate this, allow yourself to be fucking sad. Uh, but dig yourself out of that space. Give yourself a day out of the week. Give your, you know, that rest day for yourself to be also alone you know, I sit in with talking to all of my friends who are now paired with someone else. Everyone is, okay, she is whining, so I'm going to uh, just move the camera and, and do this so that she can go outside. Um, everyone whom I, all my friends are with someone. Oh, and it's also really sad because I'm so happy for my best friend that I made here in Vegas. He's moving in with the woman that he has dated for the past year. Uh, and I'm really fucking happy for him. But at the same time, again, I'm sad because I'm alone still. Uh, and, you know, and now I've lost uh, essentially kind of like you lose your friendships or not. Um, they take a little step back when people are paired up with each other. And it totally makes sense, obviously, because your, your partner in life is your best fucking friend. But then when you, when you yourself doesn't, don't have anyone, it's fucking lonely. Uh, but everyone that I've 
talk to, essentially, you still need those moments. And I think that this is really important for everyone who, no matter if you have a fam if you have kids and, and you're in this great relationship, you need those moments for yourself. Um, because I think it's for your own sanity where in, you need to, you know, give yourself a break from each other, uh, is, is the sense that I have gotten with all of my friends who are, you know, partnered with someone. It's nice to have those moments alone. Um, and so do that because life is fucking insane. So <laughs> like I said, so I think that's what you just, you need to have that, that moment to settle yourself, uh, and reset yourself. Just, you need to do that, but don't, you don't have to, don't do it for whole fucking week. Uh, you know, do it for a day. Uh, and that's why Sunday, I don't fucking do shit. And, but I, I was creative today. I did bright today. So, and I'm doing this. So I'm proud of myself. And cheers to fucking the new year as an atheist. I don't get too many holidays. I get my birthday. I give myself my arrival day from Korea as a stoner 420. But I guess it's in my, it's the 4th of July which fireworks are awesome um and uh yeah and new year's so cheers guys cheers to that fucking love your fucking self and keep fucking trying keep going for the things that you want in life i know it's fucking hard Take it from me, but just fucking do it. Peace out.